this right. Recently, I've had a handful of students that are kind of preparing to perform acoustically in coffee shops and things like that. So it just happens that I am actually preparing to do the same thing. I play in some bands and <clears throat> do the full band thing. But I've decided this year that it's kind of important for me to be able to also perform on my own. So I've been setting up a, an acoustic set and today I'm gonna show you guys my acoustic setup if I'm at a coffee shop performing, what that setup looks like, all the gear that I use. Right, so I'm gonna use this carpet area here in my studio to sort of represent a stage or an area where you would be performing. And I'm gonna set up all my gear on there just as I would try to set it up at a coffee shop. For your most basic setup, all you need, like I said before, is a microphone, a guitar, and a speaker to amplify yourself. Now that we've kind of covered that, we've kind of got a, got a visual of my stuff here, I want to just kind of look at each thing a little bit. So first, this microphone stand, it is a boom microphone stand. In other words, it comes up and then it has an arm that booms out, giving you space in between the stand and the microphone. That's really handy if you're doing acoustic guitar kind of performances, so that you can sit the microphone and you have room for the guitar and perhaps some pedals on the floor, if that's something that you're using. The microphone that I'm using is an SM58. I recommend it. Some people could argue that there are better microphones and depending on your voice, which one you should use. But this thing is tried and true. It's probably about a hundred bucks. It's worth it. It is very good at it helping you avoid feedback and it has a good sound. It's, it's, and it's tough, it's a tough microphone. So I recommend it. And from there, since we're sitting here, I'm gonna show you just a little bit of fluff, things that I have that you don't necessarily need to get started, but they're things that I have and I use, okay? So the first one is this fancy little rubber clippy thingy. It is actually a pick holder. It is made by Dunlop. It's rubber, rubbery, bendy, and it just clips onto your microphone stand here, and you stick guitar picks in there, which is really handy, because if you drop one or you misplace one, which is what I usually do, I usually misplace them, you can just grab another one and keep on keeping on. That's pretty awesome. I use that all the time. Some of you might be good enough to memorize all of your songs, but if you're gonna play a true gig, which might be two to three hours, you're gonna need upward of uh, 40 songs, 50 songs, depending on how long they are. It gets really hard to memorize that many songs. So it's much easier to have music in front of you somewhere that you can reference if you get lost or something. I use an iPad and an application which is called OnSong. And it stores all of my music. If you'd like to know more about that particular app and its use, let me know in the description. I would be happy to help you guys out and do a video about it. <clears throat> Taking a, a look at my pedal board here, the only thing that's truly necessary is a DI box, which I have right here. What the DI box does is it actually uh, converts the signal. If you look, most acoustic guitars, some exceptions, uh, have what we call a quarter inch jack, TRS, and most PA systems have a three prong XLR cable that looks like this. This is the, the female side of it, obviously, but uh, this is the signal, which is a balanced signal. The guitar signal is unbalanced, and what the DI box does is it converts it to a balanced signal so that it can go into the speaker that you're using. This is the one that I use. There are some cheaper versions that are passive. This one's powered. The only other thing I'm using on my pedal board for acoustic sets 
is my HX Stomp, which is just an effects pedal, which adds some reverb, things like that. So I know this probably isn't the most flattering angle here, but I wanted to just give you this angle so you can see one important thing about my speaker, my amplification. A lot of people think that you need like a acoustic guitar amplifier to get things done and that's an okay route to go. Usually an acoustic guitar amplifier comes with an input for your guitar and one vocal microphone and they come with some effects. They can be upward of $400, they're kind of expensive. A lot of times you can get into something a little cheaper if you just buy a self-powered PA speaker. This is a Harbinger, uh, the Very series, and I think I got it on sale uh, for like 150 bucks, somewhere in there at Guitar Center, which is a pretty good deal. It has, right here, that, the reason I was doing this, oh. So you can see, there's two inputs here. I could even uh, attach with some RCAs, I could attach a, uh, an iPod if I wanted. And all I need is my vocal and my guitar. This is exactly what I need. And so, it's a good way to go. Not as fancy, if you want effects, you're gonna have to add them before the speaker. But it's a good place to get started. And actually, I think it's kind of a little more future-proof. If you're starting out with acoustic stuff and you move into some bigger band stuff, you're gonna need PA speakers too. Anyway, so if you get one right now, you can always go get a matching one later and you've got a, a full PA. So that pretty much sums up this video. A basic acoustic guitar set up for any coffee shop or small gigs that you might be doing. Just to sort of recap, really all you need to get this done is a microphone, a microphone stand, a guitar, and an amplification source of some kind. That could be an acoustic amp or even just a self-powered PA system can work. If this was useful, and you'd like to see more stuff like this, or if there's another topic that you would like to learn about, let me know in the, the comments below and I'll happily take a look and see if I can help. Thank you guys once again. Take care.